Now, as I said, the main problem of our country is lethargy. And lethargy is something we have to work somehow. And this lethargy is a, actually a satanic force. It's not lethargy only of the matter that comes from material domination on the spirit. But it is really satanic because it stops your progress and is to be avoided. And to get out of it, one has to be really alert about it, how it crawls onto you. Krishna has put the worst vice in the whole world is alasya, means vitharsi. Alasya pijayati. Everything comes out of alasya. According to him, first the lethargy comes in, and because of lethargy we get into vices, and then we go to the right side also because of lethargy. Because just to avoid the lethargy, we go to the right side too much. So, according to him, everything starts with lethargy, and then the person loses the essence of life through lethargy. And this is our special quality. And that is our real problem, is the lethargy. Because Sahaja Yoga is a thing where we say there is a Kriya. You don't have to do anything. It is effortless. Everything works out effortless, spontaneously. So we think that everything is going to work out for us spontaneously. Only the Kundalini Jagruti is spontaneous for the first time, not for the second time, only for the first time. That is, I have to do it, or my photograph has to do it. But afterwards, you have to work. You have to keep your Kundalini afloat. You have to understand what are your problems, what are you getting into. I mean, individually, every one of you is a masterpiece, individually. Because of lethargy, you are clouded. Secondly, because of lethargy, you are secluded. Lethargy gives you also ego. Because anything that challenges lethargy, you get on top of that person. You don't like such a person. But the lethargy also those do not have. Are the people, their attention is not on spiritual development. Theirs is, as I told you yesterday, on other things, which are not important to spiritual life. We pay so much attention to other things than to our spiritual life. Why is it? Why is it we pay more attention to material things, to material comforts, to material achievements, to material uh, obsessions? Why? You must think about it. And why not to our spiritual ascent? The reason is we have been identified with matter. Machinery has also given us lethargy. Because we use machine-made things, our hands do not work. We have lost all the deftness of the hands. We have lost all the walking capacity. We can only take a bus or a car. We do not want to walk at all. Now, this mechanization and the use of matter too much has made us sort of matters 
ourselves. We have become matter. That we cannot live without it. It we are so identified with it. After realization, if you are still identified with the matter, then your realization slows down. So to one has to understand, one has to understand fully that matter is absolutely secondary. Without, of course, getting your body, you cannot receive realization. You have to have your body. But matter which is gross is of no meaning. Subtle matter is all right for us. That's important. Like this light which is burning is important. Water that is in the ocean is all right. The sky, open sky, say here it is not so good. But if you go to a country, it's even better. The Mother Earth, say example here, I don't know how it is, but in India, certain places, Mother Earth is very much sucking your material identifications. So matter has been identified with us, we have been using it, living with it, and that's why it is easy for us to get back into the same circle of matter. And we get into it, we pay attention more to it. Now, if I say do not pay attention to it more, then you go to another side. In a subtler way, you jump into vices. Vices of, I can say, uncleanliness, filth, dirt, uh, mismanagement. So from one extreme to another extreme, you go. Now, in the center, what is matter? We should understand. And we should try to then identify ourselves with our spirit. Now, what is matter? Let us find out. What is matter is? And what is created out of matter? Matter, you know, is made out of five elements. You know the five elements which have made this body of ours. And these five elements are on the right-hand side of the human beings. And these five elements either push you towards the left side or pull you towards the right side. I mean to say that when you start using the matter, gradually you become lethargic. You become slave to it. It forms a habit. If you use a chair, then you cannot sit on the ground. If you are used to a comfortable life, you cannot live in an uncomfortable life. Sort of it slaves you. Secondly, if you try to Overpower the matter. Getting overactive with matter, you make everything properly and make everything nicely and everything. You are over-efficient with the matter. Then your ego develops. And when your ego develops, you go into violence. Because if you produce more, you have to be violent about it. Otherwise, you do not know how to sell it. You become sort of an aggressive businessman or a country which tries to sell the matter, which tries to overpower other nations with their material advancement. With violence, you go a little further, then what becomes out of you is nothing, but you become materialistic. And materialistic people have no heart. A materialistic person has no heart. He's just dried out. He only understands money, money, and money. He doesn't go beyond it. So too much attachment to money is also materialistic. Waste of money is also materialistic. Mismanagement of money is the worst of all. So to be materialistic is your nature. You have started with it. That's human nature to be materialistic because we have started with matter. But it is also the human nature to ascend.
matter is to be treated with respect because it is created by God. But whatever is respected is to be respected, not everything. Everything in the matter is not to be respected. For example, if you see some sort of a painting which is, which is not auspicious, it is not auspicious. You should refuse to see such a painting. You should avoid seeing such a painting because it is not going to give you any joy, any happiness, nothing. It is not going to work out. Now, one of the things which people always tell me that in Sahaja Yogis do not have a presence. This is a very important thing. The presence is done by matter. Now, our presence, if it is not all right, people can make it out. All things that are in us, if they become auspicious, we'll have a presence. Wherever we'll stand, people will know there's a presence. And this presence is a blessing of the matter to us. So you must respect matter in the sense what clothes we wear, throwing clothes on the ground, throwing here and there, living like a donkey, like a pigsty, is not the way a Sahaja Yogi should live. He has to be orderly, he has to respect his clothes. But it should not be that you respect your clothes so much that you throw away others' clothes. The others are Sahaja Yogis also. You have to respect each other because you are all saints. If you respect yourself, you have to respect others. And once you start respecting the matter, which is the essence in you, that is attention. The essence of matter is attention. Attention gives you the presence. If you can control your attention, you can overcome your material domination. Now the best thing is to put attention to your spirit. If you start putting your attention to the Spirit, the sweetness of the Spirit itself will make the whole thing very sweet and beautiful. The attention should be in the Spirit. When you are getting ready, keep the attention on the Spirit. Now it's not difficult because Kundalini has reached that stage. Before realization, if I had said it, then you would have said, Mother, how to do it. But now when you have got realization, try to bring your attention to Spirit. Means first, when the Kundalini rises, you start looking at the Spirit. Or you say when you get realization, you see the Spirit. In the sense that the Spirit starts flowing through you, you start watching it flowing in this thing. But then, after some time, you must enter into Spirit and see, see through the window of the Spirit, the whole thing, by developing your witness Spirit. If you develop your witness, state. From attention you become knowledge, the truth. When you develop your witness state, this will come to you, that you will not keep things to yourself, but you would like to give and share, sharing. That is the time you should know you have become a witness, because you are enjoying. Witness state is the state of Shri Krishna, of Virata. 